What is up, my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crotta Lake. And today we are reading Requiem, a Sainter Sides one shot by Graceful Raven Feathers on fanfiction.net. If you'd like to read along or support the author, there is links to the author and in the fic in the description below. That made no English -y sense, but you know what? I'm trying. Description. This is a crossover for Sainter Sides and Dear Evan Hansen. So basically, Dear Thomas Sanders, Virgil is Connor, Roman is Zoe, Logan is Larry, Patton is Cynthia, and Thomas makes a guest appearance. If you'd like to check out some of the triggers for this fic, look in the description below. Please stay safe. And with that, I would like to get on with the story. Roman glared at the wall. He knew he should feel sad that Virgil... That Virgil was gone, but he just felt nothing. Why would he? The jerk had done nothing but hurt him in the other sides. He ran a hand through his hair. Why should I play this game of pretend? Remembering through a second and sorrow. He stared at the program from the funeral. Such a great son and wonderful friend. Oh, don't the tears just pour. He said to himself sarcastically, I could curl up and hide in my room. There in my bed, still sobbing tomorrow. Roman reasoned. Thomas would get it. I could give in to all of the gloom. He walked to his desk and picked up the program, looking at the picture of anxiety. But tell me, tell me what for. He crumpled the paper. Why should I have a heavy heart? Why should I start to break in pieces? Why should I go and fall apart for you? He shook his head, sifting through his emotions. Why should I play the grieving side and lie, saying that I miss you? And that my world has gone dark without your light. Roman let out a bitter laugh. <laughs> I will sing no requiem tonight. Logan pushed up his glasses. His usually impersonable emotions were difficult to rein in and were flying everywhere. He had tried to understand and accept Virgil, but he had failed. I gave you the world, and you threw it away, leaving these broken pieces behind you, everything wasted, nothing to say, so I can sing no requiem. Patton had been inconceivable during Virgil's funeral. He thought of the youngest side as a son, and yet he'd taken his own life. But looking at the suicide note, he finally found a little peace. I hear your voice and feel you near. Within these words, I finally find you. Mortality sniffed. And now that I know that you are still here, I will sing no requiem tonight. Thomas didn't know exactly what was going on. All his sides could tell him was that Virgil had killed himself and his anxiety would take a new form eventually. His emotions were going haywire. Sometimes he was anxiety free. He was happier than he'd been in such a long time. Other times he was sobbing uncontrollably for no apparent reason. One night, when he finally fell asleep, he could tangibly separate the emotions felt by the sides. Roman and Logan wondered, why should I have happy hearts? Roman was extremely angry. Why should I say I keep you with me? But Patton chimed in at the same time, saying, I'll keep you with me. Why should I go and fall apart for you? Questioned creativity. Suddenly, Thomas's head exploded into three-part harmony. Roman's thoughts were the most prominent. Why 
should I play the grieving side and lie, saying that I miss you and that my world has gone dark without your light? Patton chimed in again, this time with, I can see your light. But the main thought was anonymous. I will sing no requiem. And Thomas woke up with a start, his thoughts flying at a thousand miles a minute. Roman sat on his bed, running his hands through his hair. I will sing no requiem tonight. He decided forcefully. He stood, looking at the crumpled picture of Virgil. He narrowed his eyes dangerously. Cause when the villains fall, the kingdoms never weep. No one lights a candle to remember. No, no one mourns at all. They lay them down to sleep. He addressed the picture, becoming more angry and passionate as he vented. So don't tell me that I didn't have it right. Don't tell me that it wasn't black and white. After all you put me through, don't say it wasn't true. That you were not the monster that I knew. Herman's voice cracked, thinking back to the suicide note. His voice suddenly softened, sinking back down to his bed. Cause I cannot find the grieving side and my... He let out a sad, breathy laugh. Say that I miss you and that my world has gone dark. Logic adjusted his tie and sat at his desk. He knew he couldn't focus on the failures both Virgil's and his own. He had to move on. I will sing no requiem. Patton dried his tears and folded Virgil's note. He put it on his bedside table and turned out the light. I will sing no requiem. Roman sighed. He took one less look at the funeral program, then threw it away. He curled in a ball on his bed. I will sing no requiem tonight. He spent some time humming himself to sleep. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support the creator once again, you can find their t d details in the description below. I'd like to apologize for my singing, but, you know, we're starting up our musical at school, so I kind of felt like it. You know, I'm just kind of in that mood. And in the description, there's also links to my Etsy shop where you can buy cool beaded things. I recommend you check it out. There's also links to all my social medias, including Twitter, Instagram, Wattpad, TikTok where I've been recording a lot of Sanderside's cosplays, and at the channel Discord where you can talk to other ducks and drakes. Thank you for listening, and much like Roman trying not to sing everyone awake, even though already one's already awake, do your best.